Morgan Stanley out with a warning on the U.S.-China trade war. An analyst at the brokerage warning, quote, if talks stall, no deal is agreed upon and the U.S. imposes 25 percent tariffs on the remaining $300 billion of imports from China, we see the global economy heading towards recession. Doug Flynn, certified financial planner and co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management, joins us now. Great to see you, Phil. Um, OK, so we have a prediction of a global recession if nothing gets done, if we continue to be stalled with China in this trade dispute. What are your thoughts on that, Phil? Are we headed to recession in that scenario? Uh, it, maybe globally they're talking in the U.S. Uh, definitely not. I mean, th this is probably a 0.6 percent hit to our GDP at this point, even if all the tariffs are on all 300 remaining billion dollars. That's it. That's it. And so 0.6 is not going to send the U.S. into a recession. Now, it may turn parts of the uh, different parts of the world into a negative, but the definition of recession is, is two negative quarters of GDP, and that is not happening in the U.S. anytime soon. And this isn't going to affect it either. Well, uh, Doug, I'm sorry. I think I called you, Phil. <laughs> That's Doug, okay. I will get it right, and I apologize for that. <laughs> no worries. Um, so, but, but certainly... If the longer this drags on, the more mm -hmm. companies are being holding back on capital expenditures, on, on really planning for the future. I feel like a sure. lot of these companies naturally are not going to do anything until this thing gets resolved. So surely the impact would be greater than 0.6 percent. Well, look, it, it's, we're talking about $100 billion of cost to a $14 trillion economy. Mm. That is also not enough to change the entire picture of the United States. Are certain parts of the economy going to be impacted? Absolutely. Supply chains going to be impacted. People are going to have to make decisions. But a lot of these people made decisions to stay with China when for years and years there were better and cheaper options to move to, whether it be Vietnam or India or other places. And that can still happen. So, you know, China has to be careful here. While this is certainly important and it's uh, uh, you know, China represents less than 1% of our exports. We're almost 5% of their exports. So they have more to lose than we do. And there are certain companies that are absolutely going to get hit here. Yeah. But in the big picture, it's not enough to change the dynamic U.S. economy that we have going on. That's going to continue. And from an investor point of view, how do you play this? It seems like with every diff differing headline, markets can take a big leg down or they can come back mm -hmm. uh, again. I mean, obviously the volatility is yeah. up and I know that can provide opportunities within itself. But how do you play this? Yeah, so I think people are, are looking at the China China as the reason or the tariffs as the reason right now the market's a little volatile. But in reality, when you just spring back uh, 20 percent up after being down 20 percent mm. uh, at the end of last year, a little fallback to 5 or 10 percent is not an unreasonable expectation. In fact, on average, we have 3 to 4, 5 percent drops in a year. We haven't even had one yet. So I wouldn't even be convinced that coming down 5 to 10 percent is attributable to this. Mm. You have to take the long view here, and that's what Trump is taking, is the long view. And in the end, do you end up better off? And I think we do, and that's the problem. You have to just work through it in the short run, and that's, right. that's a tough part. It's People just, aren't used to that. It's exactly right. We just have to get to the finish line. Doug Flynn, thank you so much, Doug. Appreciate <laughs> your time. Absolutely, yeah, Ashley. Take you. care. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. <laughs> All right, well, UBS out with a warning on the impact of the U.S.-China trade war for retailers in this country. Here's what they say. We think potential 25% tariffs on Chinese imports could accelerate pressure on these companies' profit margins to the point where major store closures become a real possibility. Let's bring in Bert Flickinger, Managing Director of Strategic Resource Group. And, you know, Bert, too, you also had uh, the major footwear companies come out, band together, and make a, and write a very big, large letter to the United States government saying this is going to impact our bottom line. How bad is this going to get? Not as bad as UBS sounds, Cheryl, because hmm. to Doug Flynn's uh, present points, uh, brought up a minute ago with uh, you and Ashley Webster. This is really de minimis. Let's ask ourselves a Socratic question of how did the production get to China in the first place when Phil Knight, Nike, as, as well as Walmart, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, Fruit of the Loom, moved the manufacturing from 100 years of footwear and textiles in the U.S. to the People's Republic of China. As Doug presently pointed out, it could be moved uh, to other countries in South Asia. It could be onshored with robotics, mechanization, and technology, slowly but surely with the supply chain in the U.S. Well, and it, and but, it's, but Bert, I, I need to push back, though, because it's not what we're fighting with them. We're not fighting over footwear with them. We're fighting with them over Internet, uh, about Internet protocol, the theft of, of, their, of our technology, these forced transfers, the lack of investment. So it's other things that we're arguing with. 
To the retailer's point, it would make sense for them to actually leave their operations in China, I would think. Take the tariff fight out of this, look forward and, and maybe look to a day when we have an agreement. Then would you tell these retailers to leave their businesses in China? We would, would tell the retailers, Cheryl, a combination of the two can keep businesses in the PRC, uh, mainland Republic of, or People's Republic of China, hedge the bets, as Doug referenced, put them in other uh, key continents and countries, including the United States, including NAFTA, including the Americas, because at the end of every fiscal year, the cost of manufacturing is just a penny on the dollar for the footwear. A lot of it is marketing, gross profit margin, et cetera. But the cost of the raw materials with cotton uh, being at historic lows, crop year over crop year, other costs of goods being at historic lows, the cost of making uh, footwear is somewhat of a red herring, whether it's footwear or textiles. Yeah. There's overcapacity okay. in the U.S. the way there's overcapacity in oh. retail, and it'll okay. balance out.